All right, everybody. So it's Tuesday. It's been a long week, and it's Tuesday. So let's talk about a few things. We're gonna do our normal where we talk. Uh, where I'm, I'm gonna do a reading and everything. But uh, obviously, there's a lot going on right now. Um, Georgia election. I mean, go Democrats, I guess, uh, because at this point. You pretty much just have to assume anybody who's a conservative is kind of a fascist at this point, especially conservative politicians. If not, they're at least fascist adjacent. And while Democrats are also kind of, at least some of them, especially uh, John, Mr. John Ossoff, the Democrat who doesn't believe in, you know, literally anything that Democrats should stand for, like, you know, health care and, and, you know, housing and debt cancellation and things like that. Uh, I guess go, go you guys, I suppose. But I guess the big thing is, uh, on, on our side, obviously, the military is, there. Trump has been, uh, he, he's been pardoning a lot of war criminals. Uh, started with Clint Lawrence. Uh, we've had, uh, we had Mike McGinnis, who was uh, Clint Lawrence's um, weapons sergeant, weapons NCO, during the incident that got Clint put in prison for, you know, multiple years. We had him on, we talked to him uh, about the everything, the, the whole incident, and I got, I, got, I, got, I got to tell you, Clint, Clint Lawrence is he's a fucking murderer. Um, it's it's real hard. It's real hard to get convicted for murder in in a war zone. You you really gotta you really gotta try hard. Uh, much like uh, Robert Bales, who you know he uh, got drunk, left base, murdered twenty people. Uh, and then lit their bodies on fire, some of them while they were still alive, and he killed women and children and, you know, people who had no, uh, you know, n- nothing to do with the Taliban. So, uh, let me, uh, look at this. Okay, look, just just look at this. Okay, so uh, this this comes from uh, Hope, who works at, uh, Hope, Hope Hodgsec, she works at Military.com, who had this, so Military.com did not, write this it was written by some goofy ass lieutenant colonel uh who was a part of clint lawrence's trial i mean basically it's a organization that exists solely to get pardons for war criminals um it's kind of fucked up in this current environment that we well we don't need something like that but we have something like that because we have so many fucking war criminals so this is the same group that got you know helped get clint lawrence uh a pardon and now they're trying to get one for robert bales and I don't, I can, I can understand if there are like, hey, there's some questions about how this or how that happened. I can understand that. That's not what's happening here because Robert Bales literally said, yes, I went off post. I did all these things and I murdered those people. Like he said it, he's admitted to it. And it's in this, uh, it, it's in this, this article. My real worry here is not really under the, the military hat, but under the public affairs hats because... As Hope says, uh, I've always believed on principle that publications, op-ed pages should be able to include those the editor disagrees with. This is not a disagreement. Like, and and the the idea that we have to do this both sidesism is is really, really I. The more freedom we get, the dumber everything gets. I don't know. I don't know how this is. I don't know how this is actually working out. Because let's be honest, you don't need to do this. Um, there is no like, uh, let's. We have to hear the other side. He murdered people, and he admitted murdering to it. As society, we know that this is incorrect. Like murdering people is wrong. If you believe that what he did is okay, it's because you think the people that he murdered are less than human. That makes you a huge fucking shithead. Which you know, and uh, th- this is this has nothing to do with you know any arguments you know before the tankies all come in and call me a, a war criminal too for taking a bunch of pictures in Afghanistan. Uh, you know this is this is literally somebody who went on vengeance killing in uh, in Afghanistan. So there's no there is no both sides that needs to be heard here, and it's it's kind of fucked up that you know that there's a and i don't know maybe they felt like they had to maybe they felt pressured because like oh if we don't if we don't print this then then we're not showing a fair uh, a fair side because they military.com did have an op-ed uh written by one of the guys who prosecuted robert bales and was like don't give him a pardon he fucking murdered those people which is a normal fucking thing to think uh and you know it's like oh well we've got to we've got to talk about the other side of it you don't 
Because the other, there is no other side of it. He murdered people. He murdered people. That's all you got to say about it. There's nothing else that you got to do. There's no need for any of this. You don't need to present. You don't need to present both sides of it. You've got one side, which is this guy murdered people, and the other side is he murdered people. You know, this isn't like a uh, the, the 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 Turks telling us. Well, did you ever think that a million Armenians just had a bad vibe? That that's the we don't need to do that. We don't we don't have to do that. Um, Holocaust denialism is bad enough, man. Like, we don't need to fucking do this. We don't have to. Uh, so, so really, that's my biggest thing on the Robert Bales thing. Because, like, what's going to happen? Trump's either going to do it or he's not. Uh, th- there's really not a whole lot that we can do about this one way or the other. I Shut the fuck up. God damn. Sorry, my phone decided to start listening to me. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, we don't, um, we don't have to go through this. We don't have to, uh, stand for war criminals, basically. Uh, Trump's going to pardon whoever he's going to pardon. I think he's probably going to be a little preoccupied. He's got 15 days. So we got like two weeks to get Robert Bales off. I don't really think it's going to happen though. We'll bug and see though. Uh, if he is, I'm not going to be surprised. I would be pleasantly surprised if Robert Bales continues to rot in prison, but if he got, uh, released, I would be saddenly surprised, but really like it just doesn't, it, it really kind of shows how truly fucked everything is that anything like this can happen. And like that, if anybody on the other side would look at that and not think, Oh wow, it's fucked up that these things happened. Like, no, they consider it a winning, which I guess, man. I mean, I guess if you're the one in power, technically you did win. And I have long since gotten rid of all of the, uh, you know, the the starry eyed like, oh, but our democracy and our constitution, it's all dumb. It's all dumb. Should have been blown up and rewritten every 50 fucking years because everything changes. Everything's stupid and dumb. And we're just really falling into the stupid dumb trap. We're seeing how stupid and dumb it can get. And really it hasn't gotten as stupid and dumb as it can get because we haven't shot a nuke at anybody yet. Nobody shot a nuke at us either. Though uh Trump is now uh has a arrest warrant out for him uh, by the state of Iran. So fingers crossed, you know, somebody, at least somebody, maybe he'll go to prison in somebody's uh somebody's world. Not ours though. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and move on to our selected reading for this. Uh, this week. We're going to do two things, and this is going to be out of a new uh, new. This is going to be out of a different uh, GI newsletter called the uh, the GI press or the sorry the fatigue press. And we'll bring up. Oop, I'm going to bring up this little guy. I found this uh, in the fatigue press. Uh, if you're not if you're familiar with uh, with Beetle Bailey, it's the it's just been a, a, a three panel comic that's been in uh, newspapers for fucking longer than any of anybody who's watching this has been fucking alive. And uh, I like that they have they have to even talk about the GI, the underground GI newspapers, because like you never I mean, fuck, you didn't I didn't really learn anything about Vietnam in to begin with uh, in in school. So like right now at the age of 37, I'm really starting to learn about the underground newspapers and the GI coffee houses and everything. So it's really exciting to get into all of that stuff and then also find that, you know, they were talking about it, you know, back uh, in, in the comic strips, too, and, and still making light of it. All right. So uh, this is going to be our selective reading today. Now, this is going to be about Robert Chase. And let me bring up my, there it is, Robert, or I'm sorry, Richard Chase. Uh, Richard Chase was convicted uh, at a court martial for refusing uh, an order to train for riot control at Fort Hood. Uh, he was sentenced to two years of hard labor at Leavenworth and dishon- and a dishonorable discharge. Now, uh, Chase was you know, he, he was, he was seen as a figurehead. Um, he was seen as a rallying point because he was a conscientious objector. I mean, he was drafted and he showed up and he said, I'm not going to do any of this stuff. And they put him in jail and they, you know, they tried to shuffle him around. And then they said, no, you have to go to riot training. He's like, I'm not going to go fucking beat up my fellow Americans. And so they put him in prison. So, uh, there was a lot of, uh, rallying around, uh, Richard Chase. So, as, as as you can see up here, uh, injury to one is an injury to all. We uh, you know the uh, sentiment that we know. All right, 
So, uh, as I said, this is a fatigue press. We're going to be rereading two things. Uh, and one of so the thing on Richard Chase um, I've, that I've had to kind of chop up a little bit because, the, as you can see, uh, the, the scan isn't all that good. And so the, uh, the, oh, the character recognition isn't all that good on it. So I had to kind of clean it up a little bit. Some of it, I just kind of cut some stuff because I couldn't fucking figure out what it's saying. But So it was a little truncated. But... Okay, Richard Chase was assigned to HHC 166 uh, Armored 2nd AD when he came to Fort Hood in January. Um, Fatigue Press was uh, built, uh, printed uh, at the uh, Oleo Strut, which was a GI coffee house out of Colleen, Texas, uh, which is the, the city that relies on Fort Hood, basically. Uh, Fort Hood's down Texas. Uh, okay, so 1969. At that time, he informed his first sergeant and commanding officer that he would not take part in riot control training subsequently he was granted unofficial conscientious objector status around june 1929 uh, 1969 he became involved in the gi movement against the war in vietnam and the cries uh and rights for the em he also wrote for the fatigue press on september 11th he was called into the orderly room and given a direct order to report to riot control training as a, uh as a dissident uh so basically they said you're going to go do it and you're going to get your ass kicked by everybody else uh, which I would fucking refuse that order too. He, ref- he was he refused and was told that he would be given a general court martial uh, for refusal of the order. Around two weeks after the charges were read to him, he was put in the stockade for pretrial confinement. Soon after going to the stockade, he was placed in solitary confinement. While in C compound, he was beaten four times. After more than a week, he was removed from solitary, but still in the stockade, where he will remain until his court martial trial. So. Uh, like I said, he was eventually uh, put put in prison for for a couple of years. So this is you know during the the push to get him out. And then uh, so why should he be free? Here at Fort Hood, mm, here at Fort Fort Hood, riot control is the primary issue which affects the GIs. It is through the use of riot control that the GIs are used to suppress the people fighting for basic human rights, just as they are being used uh, for that purpose in Vietnam. When back, uh, when back demand that police be withdrawn from their community, when, uh, when students demand that educational systems be changed, when the workers demand enough pay to live on and the rights uh, to their own, and when the majority of the people oppose the war in Vietnam, GIs are used to suppress them, to keep, them, uh, to keep power in the hands of the rich few. Uh, when Fort Hood troops were uh, used in the, national de- uh, the Democratic National Convention, 43 black GIs refused uh, to be used to suppress their brothers and sisters who were in the streets. So, uh, just a little history on that. Uh, the 1968, uh, Democratic National Convention, there's a huge upheaval. They thought that there was going to be a lot of riots. Uh, 47 black veteran, uh, black military, uh, soldiers said that they would not go, that they wouldn't be used in those, uh, ways. Um, I don't think they all got court-martialed, but I think like eight, eight to 10 of them did. So there's a lot of dissent in the in in the ranks, and they would just they'd put you in the stock. You know, the idea is like, look, you can either go to Vietnam for a year and come back, maybe, or you can spend two years or three years in the stockades. Which, I mean, when you're 21, like that seems bad. But if you were to tell me like, <laughs> go to do hard labor for two years, or go to fucking the Vietnam War in 1968 for a year. I think I think I'm gonna go to prison, y'all. I think I'm gonna have to do it. Um, so the year before, uh, Fort Hood troops were sent to Chicago's black ghettos for riot, riot control after Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination. Federal troops were also used at the March on the Pentagon in 1967 and in Detroit in 1967. Ten thousand troops were stationed in Washington for the November 15th march against the war this year. This is sounding very familiar in a lot of ways. I think. Hmm. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, the National Guard has been used on countless occasions in ghettos and colleges. As more and more people become angered with the direction the, uh, the U.S. is heading, GIs will be used more and more to suppress them. Chase refused, uh, refused to be used for these purposes. The Army has publicly admitted that Chase, that Chase is a test case for the legality of uh, uh, riot control and uh, the reason if it should be uh, dropped or not. So... Using troops for for riot control, which is really like it was done a lot in, during Vietnam, where they would just use federal federalized troops to augment the um, the the police presence. Now, back then, 
your friendly neighborhood cop had, you know, maybe a billy club and a six shooter. The cops now are basically fitted as well as I was when I was in Iraq, so they don't really need the National Guard. When the National Guard rolls up, dude, the cops are better outfitted than them because the National Guard doesn't get any fucking funding. All the nice shit, all the, the really cool, like, good stuff that the military should have just gets funneled off to the uh, the police departments for some reason. Like, this is what's never fucking understood. I've never fucking understood. How do you have, like, so many military units like in the reserves and national guard you know we're, we're talking hundreds of thousands of soldiers who don't have access to like good you know proper weapons updated weapons the things that they need you know vehicles and stuff but the fucking cops got it like oh yeah just take all that stuff instead of you know giving it to our troops to train on just shunt them off to these motherfuckers and let them fuck around with it i'm not saying that you know the military should have more wars of you know machine wars of mach- uh, machines of war but i will say that maybe if you're gonna arm one of them stop taking it away from one guys and giving it to another that's just me as somebody who's had to shoot way too many m16 a2s in my uh in my day all right so uh the uniform code of military just uh, uh in a general court martial uh two-thirds majority is all that's needed to convict a gi if one-third of the board thinks G.I. is innocent, that should be enough reasonable doubt for a retrial. So they're pushing for the court-martial. Uh, court-martial usually has, like, it is kind of, it's not really a jury of your peers. Court mar- court-martials fucking suck because you're being judged by probably people who, who are officers or high-ranking NCOs, which, like, makes sense because why you wouldn't put a fucking specialist on there. But also, you're not exactly getting convicted by uh, a jury of your peers. And when you're a conscientious objector, or you're a military dissenter, or you're somebody who goes on AWOL, who goes AWOL, that's probably not going to work out great for you. All right. Uh, so when Chase was given the order to report for riot control, the order was illegal, according to his command, uh, and according to his commanding officer, which knew Chase was morally incapable of completing the order. Finally, investigation of the Fort Hood stockade should take place immediately. Across the country, stories of brutality in the military stockades have been printed, and some of them have been investigated. The beatings of prisoners and general uh, degradation of those prisoners are subjected to must be ended. Our demands are, one, free Richard Chase. Uh, Two, all charges must be dropped and uh, the end of the brutal and inhuman inhuman conditions in the stockades. Uh, An immediate senatorial investigation of the Fort Hood stockade is the last demand. Uh, so, and then I wanted to go in because right after that, along, along on, not on this page, but on the page, the page that this goes and gets in, gets continued into, uh, has another thing of a congressman who actually did go to the stockades. Uh, now this is from the GI press service, which is its own scene. Like, and this is, this is the thing I absolutely love about this because when you read your, 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 your newspaper, if you do, if you get a physical newspaper or if you look at websites, you know, uh, they, they might do like task and purpose, task and purpose does a lot of, uh, their own reporting and their own writing, but at times they'll host something from military.com or something else. So it's kind of like that where this is, was from another, another zine and they're like, Hey, this is on the GI press service. Let's grab it off of here and uh and and put it in our in our zine like that's how big these fucking things were it makes me really like it 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 makes me sad that i really missed out on the the uh uh the days of the zine and now all it is is subscribe to my sub stack which you know hey more power to you i'm not going to tell anybody not to make not to uh you know make a living but you know there's one of these that i found that uh talked about jane fonda i'm gonna have to find that one too Congressman Blast Stockade Conditions from the GI Press Service. Uh, Congressman Mario uh, Biaghi of New York on October 25th attacked conditions in the Fort Dix Stockade. Fort Dix is up in New Jersey uh, as the most inhumane treatment that has ever been seen. His remarks, if anything, probably possibly understate the situation since Biaghi is noted for his liberal sympathies when fights broke out between black and white Marines at Camp Lejeune uh, last summer. Uh, Biagi claim, uh, blamed it on the anti, uh, anti-war paper. So Biagi's not, he, he's, you know, like, Hey, it's the, he's not a fan of what he's being, uh, quoted in right now, basically. But, uh, Biagi was especially indignant about a form of punishment known as disciplinary chow. This is, uh, this is a diet, which consisted of two pancakes, two pieces of, oops, sorry. Two pancakes, uh, two pieces of bread, and a glass of water for breakfast. 
uh, one baked potato, one tablespoon of corn, and one a loaf of lettuce, two pieces of dry bread, and a glass of water for lunch. Biagi commented, this po- if this food was served to our prisoners of war, it would probably be a violation of the Geneva Convention. The Fort Dix Information Officer, PAO, uh, defended this kind of atrocity with uh, argument that it was also committed at other bases. And before an, an actual PAO fucking actually watches this and corrects me, I know that IO and PAO are two different things, but they're not. All right, they're not. They're y'all. Sit, we all sit in the same fucking uh, semicircle. All right. Uh, Biagi also condemned the Dick Stockade Command for using physical brutality and den- the denial of needed medical care as disciplinary measures. Uh, last June 5, conditions like these produced the uprising by prisoners in the Dick Stockade. Four members of the American Service Members Union, who were confined in the stockade at the time, uh, have been singled out by the brass for general courts martials on the charges stemming from that rebellion. The four, who have spent a large amount of the intervening five months in kind of, uh, in solitary confinement, uh, Bill Brakefield, Jeff Russell, Terry Klug, and Tom Catlaw. The attempt to make them responsible for the uprising is an attempt by the brass to cover up their own responsibility for abominable for abominable conditions that exist in the stockade. Yeah, uh, a lot of people basically, and it was, it, it's it's kind of funny because there's, you don't really go to jail, jail like prison, like when you're before you go to before you get convicted and go to prison for these guys. It was you were just like assigned to this group that was just the shitheads and you were put in put in jail uh put in like a prison and a lot of solitary confinement like this is you know this is all the shit that you see the cops doing today is all shit they've been doing forever the shit they've been doing they did to the the people protesting vietnam they did it to the people you know protesting uh, you know, shit, look up coal workers and stuff. Look at in the 1920s, the coal unions, and then the cops dropping bombs and using machine guns on them. <sighs> the fucking people with the guns will always be the ones to use the guns on you. So hope you all bought a gun. Uh, I think that's a good place to leave us right now. So like I said, this is from the Fatigue Press. Uh, this is a uh, 1969 uh, and man, I'm really, I'm really enjoying going through this because I end up when I started reading this and then it's like, oh, I got to look up Richard Chase. I have to look up all, you know, go going through and you really start to, to, to piece together, you know, all these things from, you know, stemming from like 1966, the very beginnings of the anti-war, uh, the anti-war push into, you know, and how things had to change. We'll talk about some of those, like how tactics had to change and how there's a lot of, uh, eventually kind of got decentralized and fell apart after Vietnam, which is understandable. There is no more war to protest, uh, which is also why there's not these things now. There's, I mean, there's a war to protest, but everybody is a volunteer at this point. Um, nobody's being drafted. If you had a shitload of people being drafted, there'd be a shitload of people pissed off, I guarantee you. But anyway, uh, so thank you all for tuning in, and we'll talk to you, I don't know, I don't know, man. I'm trying to do do these at least once or twice a week, so uh, we'll talk to you next time.